interchange 3 fourth edition unit 5 part 2 this is level number 10 intermediate 1 very important please for every student try not to use Arabic keep the words in English don't use Arabic this is number one number two we have these numbers these are the numbers these are the numbers of the exercises so you have to keep the words by heart and then you start to watch the video when you watch the video please try to listen and watch the video without subtitles okay this is very important try to train your ears to listen now let's get started six customs habits eight expectations expectations feels or believes about the way something should be predictions so expectations predictions be supposed to should host the person giving a party or dinner host the person giving a party a party t soft d british party party or dinner be acceptable be acceptable yeah sound between e and a b yeah yeah be acceptable be acceptable considered to be socially correct nine words of exercise number nine unique rare rare unusual slurping noise to drink a liquid noisily nuisance annoyance bothering disturbing label a piece of paper or other material which gives you information about the object it's fixed to so we can say a label is a piece of paper which gives information label a piece of paper which gives information 10 dressing 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 appropriately to dress in a suitable way to dress in a suitable way p p so it's in p pamphlet pamphlet booklet 11 pamphlet booklet a thin book with only a few pages which gives information about something so we can say a pamphlet a thin book a thin book which gives information booklet tips advice we can say tips of course advice we don't we don't make it counted it's not plural but we can say tips of tips or pieces of advice Indonesia a country in Asia Indonesia a country in Asia Indonesia a country in Asia this word British Asia American Asia not Asia Asia 13 excerpts excerpts short parts taken from a book window shopping wandering around shopping areas and looking in store windows blurt out begin speaking very suddenly blurt out begin speaking very suddenly interrupt also some American say this word interrupt 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 or interrupt to begin talking before someone else has finished to begin talking talking and also can say talking we have ing at the end of the word so we make it we make sometimes the g silent like talking doing and speaking so say speaking talking doing instead of saying speaking doing talking so say talking doing speaking interrupt to begin talking before someone else is finished 
tend to usually ended up resulted in something unplanned ended up resulted 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 in something unplanned chatting talking informally about topics chatting talking informally about topics pull down gates do you know gates big doors exercise number seven conversation what's a custom custom habit look at the picture here what do you see so we see here three young ladies and a man so maybe they are teenagers two of them teenagers or young ladies and here a lady and a middle-aged man okay so maybe they are husband and wife but here those are friends and the young lady is having some flowers they're very happy and they're smiling so let's listen page 33 exercise 7 conversation what's the custom part a listen and practice i just got invited to my teacher's house for dinner oh how nice yes but what do you do here when you're invited to someone's house well here in the u.s it's the custom to bring a small gift. Like what? Oh, maybe some flowers or chocolates. And is it all right to bring a friend along? Well, if you want to bring someone, you're expected to call first and ask if it's okay. I just got invited, got invited. Got American, the T here between two vowels, O and I. Gotta. I just got invited to my teacher's house for dinner. Oh, how nice. Yes. How nice? How good? Yes. But what did you hear when you're invited to someone's house? Well, here in the US, it's a custom to bring a small gift. It's the habit. It's the habit to bring a small gift. To bring a present. Like what? Oh, maybe some flowers or chocolates. So the gift could be a f could be some flowers or chocolates. And is it all right to bring a friend along? So can I get a, a friend with me? Well, if you want to bring someone, want to wanna. If you want to bring someone, you're expected to call first. You're supposed to call first. You should call first. And ask if it's okay and then you could ask the host is it okay or not so here what about Marta who invited her her teacher invited her he invited her for dinner What do you do when you're invited to someone's house in the USA? It's a custom to bring a small gift. Like what? Some flowers or chocolates? Is it alright to bring a friend along? It's supposed to call first and ask if it's okay or not. Page 33, Exercise 7, Part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. If you are invited to someone's house in Germany, when are you expected to arrive? What can you bring as a gift? What are some of the customs in Germany? Well, when you're invited to someone's house, you can also take flowers. Not red roses, chrysanthemums, carnations, or lilies, but most other flowers are fine. When should you arrive? Should you arrive a little early? 
No, never. You're expected to arrive on time. Punctuality is very important in Germany. If you're going to be more than 15 minutes late, it's important to call the host. It's also the custom to write a short thank you note the following day. I like that. I wish we did that here more often. To me, it shows good manners. What are some of the customs in Germany? Well, when you're invited to someone's house, you can also take flowers. Not red roses, chrysanthemums, carnations, or lilies, but most other flowers are fine. When should you arrive? Should you arrive a little early? No, never. You're expected to arrive on time. Punctuality is very important in Germany. If you're going to be more than 15 minutes late, it's important to call the host. It's also the custom to write a short thank you note the following day. I like that. I wish we did that here more often. To me, it shows good manners. So, if you're invited to someone's house in Germany, when are you expected to arrive? You're expected to arrive on time. This means not early and not late. Why? Because because punctuality is very important in Germany. This is very important to be punctual, to be on time. Okay, this is very important. If you are late, you should call. If you are late for about 15 minutes, you should call the host. What can you bring as gift? You should bring some flowers, but of course, not red roses or lilies. On the second day, you should send a note, thanking note. So, of course, this is shows good manners, good behavior. Page 33, exercise 8, grammar focus. Expectations. When you visit someone, it's the custom to bring a small gift. When you visit someone, you aren't supposed to arrive early. If you want to bring someone, you're expected to call first and ask. If you want to bring someone, you're supposed to check with the host. If you want to bring someone, it's not acceptable to arrive without calling first. Expectations, predictions. When you visit someone, it's a custom, it's the habit. It's a custom to bring a small gift. You are supposed to arrive early. So, here, when you visit someone, this is present, and then the second sentence in present, because we talk about, we're talking about habits. When you visit someone, it's the custom to bring a small gift, a small present. So, it's the custom to. So, it's the custom to plus a main verb and infinitive, bring. You're supposed to, or you aren't supposed to, plus infinitive. You're supposed to, you aren't supposed to, plus main verb. So here, when you plus sentence in present, the second sentence is the custom to, you're supposed to, you aren't supposed to, and the main verb, the infinitive, bring, arrive. If you want to bring someone, this is of course, F in present, because we're talking about fact. If you want to bring someone, you're expected to, you're supposed to, it's acceptable to, it's not acceptable to. So I can say here, you're expected to, you're supposed to, it's acceptable to, plus infinitive. Call, check, arrive. Negative, of course, you're, you aren't. It's, it's not. Okay? So, now, let's get this wonderful presentation with Mr. Kyle Rerson. Well, after watching the video, let's look at the grammar, okay? Now, today we're going to look at the infinitive, right? And the infinitive, if we remember, is two and then the verb. Again, the normal verb, the base form verb, not the past tense, no conjugating, just to and the verb. And that's the infinitive. So we use the infinitive in many different ways in English. But one important rule, so write this down, 
one important rule is that when we use the verb to be plus an adjective and then a verb, we always use the infinitive. So we always use to and the verb. For example, um, when you meet someone in English and you shake their hand, right? What do you say? So we say, it is nice to meet you. So even in this basic sentence, you can see the grammar. We use the verb to be, is, adjective, nice, and then the infinitive, to meet you, right? So even in the basic sentence, we can see this grammar. But this works in all contexts. For example, if I think, ah, uh, gerund, grammar, infinitive, man, this stuff is difficult. This stuff is not easy, right? I can make a sentence and say, grammar is not easy to understand. Again, the verb to be, here I'm being negative, right? And easy is my adjective, and then I use understand, to understand, for my infinitive. I have another way to say this. I could say, grammar is difficult to understand. Again, here's the verb to be, my adjective, and the infinitive, to understand. Good. Let's look at it one other way, okay? So, you look outside in the morning and you just go, wow, it is a beautiful day to go outside, okay? So, again, I'm using the verb to be and my adjective beautiful, but in this context, I'm describing something. I'm describing the day. So, it is a beautiful day. Again, I'm still going to use the infinitive, so I'm using to go. It is a beautiful day to go outside, okay? So it doesn't matter if I also use a noun, as long as I'm using my verb to be and the adjective, I can describe something, but then if I want to talk about the action, I'm still going to use my infinitive, okay? Good. Now, let's go back to the conversation that we had between Angela and Mayuki. So the expectations in Japan. So let's look at one of the first examples. We said that you are supposed to bow. So in Japan, when you meet someone, you are supposed to bow. And here's the grammar, right? So we have the verb to be and the adjective and then the infinitive to bow. So you are supposed to bow is the same type of grammar. Let's look at another example. It's not customary to shake hands. Again, I'm being negative, but I'm using the verb to be, my adjective, customary, and then my infinitive, to shake hands. It's not customary to shake hands, okay? Very good. Another example. You aren't supposed to wear shoes inside. Again, the negative form of be, my adjective, supposed, and then the infinitive, to wear shoes inside. You aren't supposed to wear shoes inside. Now, I want to take one moment to focus on the pronunciation of this too. A lot of times, especially for someone from the United States, we sort of make it sound like a ta, ta. Listen again. You aren't supposed to wear shoes inside. You aren't supposed to wear shoes inside. So notice it's a small sound. I'm not really saying to, I'm saying ta. You aren't supposed to wear shoes inside. So if you want to pronounce it like that, you can, but it's more important that you understand it. Another example, you're expected to take off your shoes. Again, there's my verb to be, the adjective, and the infinitive, to take off your shoes. Good. Here's another one. It's common to eat on the floor, right? The verb to be, the adjective, and the infinitive. Very good. Here's another one. It's unacceptable to pass food with chopsticks. The same grammar, right? And here's our last example. It's okay to drink from the bowl. Again, using the verb to be, the adjective, okay, and the infinitive, to drink. Okay, very good. So let's look at these um, separated a little bit, and you'll notice there is a distinct pattern between these ones and these ones. So you're supposed to bow, 
you aren't supposed to wear shoes inside, you're expected to take off your shoes. If you notice, all of these are using you and are to talk about the expectation is specifically for you. But in general, anybody, anybody that goes to Japan, goes to Japan. So we say you are, and that generally means anybody, right? Now all of these, if we notice, are using it is, right? So if I say it's not customary to shake hands, it's unacceptable to pass food with chopsticks, it's common to eat on the floor, and it's okay to drink from the bowl. Notice this it is talking about the situation, right? The situation is not customary. The situation is acceptable or unacceptable. The situation is common or not common. It's okay, it's not okay. That's all talking about different types of situations. And then we use the infinitive to tell you what. What is that situation? Okay? All right. So I hope this was helpful in showing you how we use the infinitive. So we use it after we use the verb to be and an adjective. Okay? And in this case, we showed you how we use it with expectations. So I hope it was helpful. Good luck with the rest of it. And thanks for watching, guys. Bye. A. Match information in columns A and B to make sentences about customs in the United States and Canada. Then compare with a partner. So in this exercise, you will match A, these sentences, with B, with this group, these sentences in this group. Why? To make new customs, to make some habits in the USA, in the United States, and Canada. 1. If you plan to visit someone at home, you're supposed to call first. You're supposed to call first. So number 1, A. Number 2. If you have been to a friend's home for dinner. If you've been. You have, you have been, British, American, been. If you've been to friend's home for dinner. E. is the custom to thank him or her. So, number two, E. Three. When you've been invited to a wedding, what's a wedding? A wedding? A marriage party. So number three, D. You're expected to, to respond in writing. You're expected to respond in writing. Again, when you've been invited to a wedding, you're expected to respond in writing. Writing. British, American, writing. And I can say in writing. Which means, of course, I could make the, the G silent. In speaking, in conversation. So, number three, D. Four. When you go out on a date, go out, what sound between O and out? When you go out on a date. A date, of course, to have a romantic relationship. When you go out on a date, it's acceptable to share the expenses. It's acceptable to share the expenses. Like, you pay 50%, I pay 50%. 5. If the service in a restaurant is acceptable, 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 that means good. If the service in a restaurant is acceptable, B. You're expected to leave a tip. If the service in a restaurant is acceptable, you're expected to leave a tap. A tap, some money. 6. When you meet someone for the first time, you aren't supposed to kiss him or her. When you meet someone for the first time, you, you aren't. You are not. You aren't. You aren't supposed to kiss him or her. So number 6, C. Again, the answers, number one, 
A, 2, E, 3, D, 4, F, 5, B, 6, C. B. Group work. How are the customs in Part A different in your country? So, here, if you plan to visit someone at home, we say the answer A, you're supposed to call first. So, here in Egypt, if you plan to visit someone at home, of course, you're supposed to call first. It's the custom to call first. But sometimes, if we are friends, and we are close friends, if you plan to visit someone at home, you don't call him. Sometimes, this is of course rude, but it happens if we are close friends and neighbors. 2. If you've been to friend's home for dinner, it's a custom to thank him or her. In Egypt here, if you've been to friend's home for dinner, it's a custom to bring a gift, to bring a gift, a present, to bring some fruits. He will answer and you will complete. The rest of the sentence says, who is the custom in your country? If you are Egyptian, Saudi Arabian, Algerian, Moroccan, Libyan, whatever your country is. Tell your class and your friends about the custom. See? Complete the sentences with information about your country or a country you know well. Then compare with a partner. Here, in this exercise, you will try to give information in plus the country. If people invite you to their home and then you tell the class what is the custom. Example. In Saudi Arabia, if people invite you to their home, it's acceptable to thank them. It's acceptable to give them a gift or a present. It's acceptable to bring a gift. When you go out with friends for dinner, when you go out with friends for dinner, it's acceptable to pay or to share the expenses. But in Egypt, when you go out with friends for dinner, it's acceptable to let the host pay. If a friend gets engaged to be married, you're supposed to bring a gift. When a relative has a birthday, a relative like uncle, cousin, brother, sister, whatever. When a relative has a birthday, it's a custom to bring to bring a valuable a valu a valuable present. If a friend is in the hospital, it's a custom to bring some flowers. If a friend is in the hostel, it's a custom to bring a box of chocolates. If a friend is in the hostel, you're supposed to bring some fruits. When someone is going to have a baby, it's a custom to give him a piece of gold as a present. When someone is going to have a baby, we make in Egypt your sabua. When someone gonna have a baby, it's a custom to give him some money. We we'll call it here in Egypt nota. When someone gonna have a baby, it's a custom to make akika, which means very big dinner or lunch. When someone gonna have a baby, you're supposed to make a banquet. A banquet, which means, of course, a very big lunch or dinner. Exercise number nine, listening. Unique customs. Customs, of course, means habits. 
Here, there are of course very rare habits. Listen to people describe customs they observed abroad. The people gonna describe some customs. People gonna describe customs, habits that they observed abroad, that they noticed abroad. Complete the chart. So, number one, where was the person? The name of the country? What was the custom? What was the habit? And how did the person react? What about the person? What about the person's reaction? Is he sad or happy? Page thirty-four, exercise nine. Listening. Unique customs. Listen to people describe customs they observed abroad. Complete the chart. One, Alice. One thing that I had to get used to when I was traveling in South Korea was the way people make noise when they drink soup. I think it's because they want to show that they're really enjoying their food, so they make a slurping noise. It bothered me at first, but then I got used to it. I guess it's because my parents spent years when I was a kid telling me not to make noise while I was eating. One, Alice. Where was Alice? Alice was in South Korea. South Korea. Where, what was the custom? What was the habit? People make noise when they eat soup. Take care with the verb eat. Eat soup, not drink soup. So here, people make noise when, when they eat soup. Yeah. How did the person react? How did Alice react? She got bothered at first. It bothered her at first. So for Alice, South Korea, people make noise when they eat soup. Bothered her at first. When I lived in Spain, I was surprised at how late people eat in the evening. When you're invited to dinner, you're asked to come around nine o'clock, and you usually don't start dinner until ten. And people stay really late, sometimes until two in the morning or even later. I found that difficult. How do you get up and go to work or school the next day after eating and talking until three in the morning? Number two, John. Where was John? John was in Spain. What was the custom? People eat. People eat late. People eat late in the evening. So the dinner is at 9 and sometimes 10 o'clock. People eat late in the evening and stay out very late. They could stay out until 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. So how did he react? He got surprised. Surprised. So John, Spain. People eat late in the evening and stay out very late, surprised. 3. Susan 3. Susan I lived in Saudi Arabia for a while, and when I went out, I had to obey the local custom of putting something over my head and wearing clothing that covered my whole body. At first, I found it a real nuisance, but after a while, I got used to it and even started to like it. You feel really secure, and also, you don't have to worry about what to wear all the time. Susan? Where was she? Susan was in Saudi Arabia. So, Saudi Arabia. What was the custom? Women wear something to cover the head, and a dress that covers the, the whole body. At first, a real nuisance. Nuisance, she got bothered. A real nuisance. But then, started to like it. So again, the answers. Number one, Alice, Korea. People make noise when they eat soup. Bothered, bothered her at first. Two, John, Spain. People eat late in the evening and stay out very late. Surprised. 3. Susan. Saudi Arabia. 
Women wear something to cover the head and a dress that covers the whole body. At first, a real nuisance, but then started to like it. Exercise number 10. Speaking. Things to remember. Per work. What should a visitor to your country know about local customs, local habits? Make a list include these points. So here, greeting someone. So here you will write about the customs. Try to use the grammar in writing. Like, for example, say, When you visit someone, it's a custom too. You're supposed to. If you wanna, if you wanna meet someone, you're expected to. If you wanna visit someone, you're supposed to. It's acceptable too. So here, for example, greeting someone, eating in public. So in Egypt here, If you want to eat in public, you're supposed to eat with your right hand. Shopping When you go shopping, when you go shopping, it's a custom to leave tips. For the workers. Dressing appropriately. If you are in Saudi Arabia, women are expected to wear abaya, which means, of course, a dress that covers the whole body. Black dress. Women are expected to wear a dress that covers the whole body. So you will write about all of these things, okay? And you will talk about all of these things to your friends. Now, number B, group work. Compare your list with another pair with another friend, then share experiences in which you or someone you know didn't follow the appropriate cultural behavior. The suitable cultural behavior. What happened? So, if you didn't follow the right happened, the right custom, what gonna happen? A. On my last vacation, I tried to bargain for something in a store. Of course, bargain means what? To negotiate about the price. Like, this is for 100? No, 50. So you say 70. Let's make the price 70 or 70. So this is, of course, a bargain. To negotiate about the price. What happened? I was told that the prices were fixed. It means no bargains. It was a little embarrassing. Yeah, because I didn't know that habit or that custom. Another example. For example, one of my friends who visited Egypt, while he was going down the subway station, the subway, the underground, he smoke what happened a the policeman went to arrest him because smoking is forbidden in the subway station i talked with the, with the guy in french and i told him this is not allowed and then the policeman left him because he was a tourist he was a foreigner he doesn't know the rules in egypt 11. Writing a tourist pamphlet. If it was a pamphlet, it means booklet. A small book or a thin book with few pages. A. 
A. Group work. Choose five points from the list you made in exercise 10. Use them to write and design a tourist pamphlet for your country. So here you try to write about your country. Tips for travelers. Tips means pieces of advice for travelers, for tourists. Look here, this is means what? No photos, no photographs, no photography. When you visit Indonesia, Indonesia, a country in Asia, when you visit Indonesia, there are some important things you should know. For example, if you're visiting a mosque or temple, a mosque, this is a place for doing prayers for Muslims or a temple, it's not acceptable to take photographs. So it's not acceptable to take photos. Also, you're supposed to, you're supposed to do what? You're supposed to take off your shoes. When you get inside the mosque, you're supposed to take off your shoes when you get inside the mosque. B. Class activity. Present your pamphlets. Now, present. What did you write? Would a visitor to your country have all the information he or she needed? This is going to be class activity between you and all your friends in the class. Exercise number 13, reading, blog. Blog means what? Blogging, writing about your experiences on the internet. So you write your experiences on the internet. Cultural shock, when you got shocked because of different habits. So here, scan the blog. What kind of cultural shock did the writer experience? So, here, look at the picture. Kit Kin Lam, a student from Taipei. She's a student from Taipei, Taiwan. So here, she has an Asian face, like the, fa the faces of Japan, China, Indonesia, Taiwan. She's Taiwanese. She's from Taiwan. So, she's from Taipei, Taiwan, is studying in Chicago. So, Kit Kin Lim is studying now in Chicago, in the USA. The following entries are taken from her blog during her first three months in the United States. So, she started to write her own experiences about life in the United States. She got shocked. Because life is different in the USA than Taiwan. Let's read. August 31. People often refer to Taipei as a sleepless city. So Taipei as a sleepless city, a city that doesn't sleep. It means all the shops, supermarket, malls are open 24 hours. But I didn't understand why until I got to Chicago. She didn't understand that. Why? Until she traveled to Chicago. I was window shopping with another student this evening. While she was shopping, what happened? Suddenly, the store owners started pulling down their gates and locking their doors. So, the owners of shops started pulling down their gates. They closed the gates, the main doors, and locked their doors. They closed the doors. Why? Soon, the whole street was closed. All the shops in the street closed. And it wasn't even dark yet, so it's not, it's not a late hour. It's not a late hour. This is not late. I'd never seen this in Taiwan. Back home, which means in Taiwan, 
The busiest streets stay awake all night. So the busiest streets in Taiwan stay awake. Which means, of course, that the owners of the shops never close their stores, their shops at night. Sometimes they are, sometimes they are open 24 hours. This is why they say 24-7 or around the clock. Around the clock means open all the time. You can go out to restaurants, stores, shops, and movies, and even movie theaters, cinemas, to the cinema, even long after midnight, even after 12 o'clock at night. So, this is of course in Taiwan, but in Chicago, no. Maybe, okay, it's not late, before midnight, maybe at 9 or 10 o'clock, they close their shops. That was in August 31. Then, what happened in September? After the first week of class, I found some differences between Taiwanese students and American students. So, what is the difference between an American student and a Taiwanese student? Taiwanese adjective from Taiwan. Whenever a teacher asks a question, whenever a teacher asks a question, my classmates immediately shout out their answers. So, this is in Chicago, in America, in the USA. The teacher asks the questions or asks some questions. The students answer. The students answer. And some of them interrupt the teacher. Interrupt, also interrupt. To suddenly talk and stop the teacher from speaking. So this is the situation, situation in America and the USA. The teacher asks questions and the students answer immediately at the same time, at the same moment. But in Taiwan, we're usually quiet in class so that the teacher can finish on time. So the teacher explains the lessons and all the students are quiet until the teacher finishes on time. Then we usually ask the teacher questions afterward. After we finish the lesson, we start to ask the teacher some questions. Also, American students seem to leave the room as soon as the class ends. Just the class ends. The American students leave the room to go home. But maybe this is in Taiwan is different as they wait until the teacher leaves first. As a kind of respect. So that was the second difference. October 6. What happened on the 6th of October? I met an interesting girl at an internet cafe. Internet cafe. And I can say also an American internet. I met a T soft D between A and E. I met an interesting girl. I met an interesting girl at an internet cafe. At an internet cafe today. I was writing an email to my mother and, I, and she asked me what language I was using. So she doesn't know the girl. And then the girl started to ask her what language was she using? We ended up talking for about an hour. Then they started to talk for about an hour. For about an hour. T sub D and H silent. Hour. For about an hour. And make link between N and O. An hour. For about an hour. People in Chicago seem very comfortable with each other. Comfortable. All silent. So people in Chicago. People. British. American. People. People in Chicago seem very comfortable with each other. It's very natural for two people to start talking in a cafe. So people can talk in a cafe, although they don't know each other. She doesn't know her. This is something that doesn't happen in Taipei. 
So in Taipei, in Taiwan, it doesn't happen like that way. At home, in Taiwan, I never just start chatting with a stranger. I can't start speaking with a stranger. Stranger, someone I don't know. I like that it's easy to meet new people here. She's very happy to meet new people here. And she started to talk with them, although, although she doesn't know them. So that was, of course, a third difference between people in Taipei, in Taiwan, and people in Chicago, in the USA. Let's answer the questions. A. Read the blog, then add the correct title to each blog entry. Cafe etiquette, cafe etiquette, American etiquette. British etiquette, cafe etiquette. So this is, could be, of course, this is the third paragraph. This paragraph, this paragraph, this is number three. Less than 24-7, which means 24-7, it means the shops are open 24 hours, seven days, around the clock. Of course, this is paragraph number one. Just say it. Just say it. This is, of course, paragraph number two. That means the students answer, answer the questions. The students answer the questions of the teacher immediately. Now number B. Here, complete the chart. So in this exercise here, we have different questions. And we'll try to complete the chart. One, when does the city shut down? In Chicago, in the evening. In the evening, Taipei doesn't shut down, doesn't shut down. So number one here, in the evening, Taipei doesn't shut down. Number two, how do students behave in class? So in Chicago, students answer questions. Some interrupts the teacher. But in Taipei, students are silent in class and ask the teacher questions after the class. So, Taipei students are silent in class and ask the teacher questions after class. 3. How do students behave after class? So, of course, in Chicago, the students leave immediately. Students leave the class immediately. But in Taipei, they wait for some time. How do people act towards strangers? Strangers, people we don't know. In Chicago, people are very friendly. People talk to each other or to the strangers. So people are very friendly. In Taipei, people don't start conversations with strangers. People don't start conversations with strangers. C. Per work. How do things in your cities compare with Taipei and with Chicago? What about your country? What about your city? What about Cairo? How do things in Cairo occur and happen? Now you can talk about your city or your country. If you are in Riyadh, in Kuwait, in United Arab Emirates, you can talk about your city. That's the end of unit number five. Level number 10. And I wish you all good luck. But before we finish, we should of course have some homework. Number one, keep the words by heart. Number two, listen and repeat. Three, answer three pages of unit number five workbook, the last three pages. Number four, Go to www.cambridge.org slash interchangearcade. 
slash. You will have more and more questions. More questions as games. Five. Watch the video of Cambridge University. Interchange three. Unit five video. It's a video, a wonderful video about this unit. Wish you all good luck, guys. Hope you like it, share it, and subscribe. Thanks. Thanks for watching. شكرا للمشاهدة. Hope you like it, share it, and subscribe. يرجى الاشتراك على القناة الآن. Thanks for watching. شكرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Mission. Booklet. Tips. Advice. We can say tips. Of course, advice. We don't. We don't make it counted. It's not plural, but we can say tips. Of, tips or pieces of advice. Indonesia, a country in Asia. Indonesia, a country in Asia. Indonesia, a country in Asia. This word, British Asia, American Asia, not Asia, Asia. Thirteen, excerpts. Excerpts, short parts taken from a book. Window shopping, wandering around shopping areas and looking in store windows. Blurt out. Begin speaking very suddenly. Blurt out. Begin speaking very suddenly. Interrupt. Also, some American say this word interrupt. Interrupt, interrupt, or interrupt. To begin talking before someone else has finished. To begin talking. Talking and also can say talking. We have ing at the end of the word, so we make it, we make sometimes the g silent like talking, doing, and speaking. So say speaking, talking, doing. Instead of saying speaking, doing, talking. So say talking, doing, speaking. Interrupt to begin talking before someone else is finished. Tend to, usually. Ended up, resulted in something unplanned. Ended up, resulted, resulted, resulted in something unplanned. Chatting, talking informally about topics. Chatting, talking informally about to listen. Now, Let's get started. Six customs, habits. Eight expectations, expectations, feels or believes about the way something should be. Predictions, so expectations, predictions. Be supposed to, should. Host, the person giving a party or dinner. Host, the person giving a party. Party, T soft D. British party, party. Or dinner. Be acceptable, be acceptable. Yeah, sound between E and A. Be yeah, yeah. Be acceptable, be acceptable. Considered to be socially correct. Nine words of exercise number nine. Unique, rare, rare. Unusual. Interchange 3, 4 sedation, Unit 5, Part 2. This is level number 10. Intermediate 1. Very important. Please. For every student, try not to use Arabic. Keep the words in English.
Don't use Arabic. This is number one. Number two, we'll have these numbers. These are the numbers. These are the numbers of the exercises. So you have to keep the words by heart. And then you start to watch the video. When you watch the video, please try to listen and watch the video without subtitles. Okay, this is very important. Try to train your ears. Slurping noise to drink a liquid noisily. Nuisance, annoyance, bothering, disturbing. Label, a piece of paper or other material which gives you information about the object it's fixed to. So we can say a label is a piece of paper which gives information. Label, a piece of paper which gives information. 10. Dressing. Dressing. Dressing appropriately. To dress in a suitable way. To dress in a suitable way. P. P. So it's in P. Pamphlet. Pamphlet. Booklet. 11. Pamphlet. Booklet. A thin book with only a few pages which gives information about something. So we can say a pamphlet, a thin book, a thin book which gives information.